Hey there, this is Seth from retipster.com and in this video we're going to talk about a website called Rentometer or Rentometer depending on how you like to pronounce it. We're going to talk about what this thing is and whether or not it's something you can really rely on when you're trying to find rent estimates in your area. So if you're in the rental property business, there's a good chance you've come across this website or at least something similar to it at some point when you're trying to find rent comps in the area of a property you're looking at. I remember for myself back when I first bought my first rental property, I found out about this website pretty quickly and I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, it was free. I could just enter in a few basic pieces of information like the property's address, a rent amount, and then how many bedrooms there were, and it would tell me whether or not the rent price that I had put in there was reasonable for that given area based on the property that I was looking at. And I remember thinking this thing was so helpful, I had it bookmarked and I went there again and again and again for every property that I analyzed until one day when I was working with my realtor and he sent me a bunch of investment properties to look at and telling me, hey, this property will rent for X amount and this other property will rent for X amount. So I went on to Rentometer and I put in those addresses and those numbers and lo and behold, I found that uh, his numbers were way off compared to what this website was telling me. And I told him that and he basically just blew off this website and said it was totally inaccurate and not reliable. And I guess it was kind of hard to argue with him because when I thought about it, I wasn't actually giving that much information to this website. It was literally just an address, the number of bedrooms, and the rent them out, and that was pretty much it. I didn't tell it any information about the condition of the property, the size of the property, the parking available, the number of bathrooms. There's all kinds of stuff that you're not even allowed to put into the system, and yet somehow it gives you numbers that are supposed to be reliable. So I started thinking to myself, Okay, is this website even good for anything? Is it even worth my time to look at this or should I just be looking elsewhere? Well, I think honestly, in order to make that assessment, we really have to know, first of all, where is this data coming from in the first place? And I was doing a little bit of digging on this, trying to figure out if anybody had any idea where Rentometer is getting their information. And when I was looking at the company's website, I found really just a couple of areas where they addressed the issue. And the first one basically said that they don't give out any specific names of their sources, but they collect rental listing data and rent data from a variety of sources, including bulk syndicated data, their proprietary rental data survey, whatever that is, and user generated input and listings of rental data. I also found another page on their site where they said, we collect data on a daily basis from all across the country. Most of the data is listing data, so it reflects asking rent for the most part. They do have some landlords and property owners providing actual rent data, however that is relatively small compared to the listing data. So I guess this mostly leaves us with a big fat question mark in terms of specifics. However, when they say that they're using listing data as the primary source of their information, that's essentially telling us what landlords hope to get for rent, not what they're actually getting for rent. And I will say, I don't think that necessarily means the numbers are inaccurate. I think a lot of times landlords will end up getting what they're asking. However, that is not always how it pans out. So it's just worth noting, it's not necessarily reality, but it's probably not that far off from reality. So when it comes down to it, how accurate and reliable is Rentometer really? Can you really just plug in three pieces of information and have 100% confidence in the numbers it gives you? Well, I think the short answer is no. It's just not that simple. As much as I wish it was, it's just not how the real world works. However, I do think Rentometer is a fairly decent starting point. Say if you're entering a new market and you just know nothing, you have absolutely no idea what to expect, then I think sure, Rentometer is not a bad place to start. And considering that it's free, at least for the first few pulls that you do, and then also the speed and convenience of it, I think those things are definitely worth something. It's not like you have to just throw out the website because you don't have all the information and it's not a perfectly clear picture of what's going on. So something else that's also worth knowing about is this other thing called Rentometer 
Pro, which is a paid membership to the site that gives you a few more capabilities that you wouldn't normally have with just the free version of the site. The way it works is similar to the free version. You start by entering in the address, rent amount, and the number of beds, but then it lets you go a few steps further by putting in the maximum age of the comps that are being used. So the data that's being pulled is this dating back for the past three months, six months, 12 months, 48 months. You can tell it how far back you want to go. The further back you go, the more information you'll have, but it will also be a little bit less accurate, reliable, and relevant compared to today. For example, if you went all the way back 48 months, I mean, that's four years ago. A lot of stuff can happen in a market in four years, which is, you know, just worth being aware of. You can also set the search radius. So for example, if you're in a densely populated area like Chicago or San Francisco or something like that, then frankly, you don't have to go that far to find comps in your area. And then also the further away you go, the more potential there is for the comparable properties to be actually very, very different than the one that you're looking at. So the closer you can stay to your subject property, the more reliable those numbers are likely to be. The clear advantage here of using the pro version of the site is that you can decide what you want that to be rather than just taking what they decide to do for you. You can also set the building type, whether you're looking at an apartment or condo or house or a duplex. And when you hop over to a rentometer property report, you'll find that it gives you a lot of information, which by the way, most of this stuff is available elsewhere for free. However, it does sort of bring it all into one place for every specific property for you, so you don't have to go hunting all over the place to find it. I thought the most notable things about these reports were that it shows you the current rent that's being charged for that particular property. However, I'll also tell you that I did a number of searches on properties that I own, and that particular number came up blank. They didn't have any data for it. So just because it's available for some properties does not mean you're gonna see it there for all properties. Just keep that in mind. It'll also tell you the latest sale date and the sale price and the mortgage amount and who the lender name is. Stuff that could come into play and be helpful to know about. Say if you're about to make an offer on a property and it would be kind of interesting to know, okay, what did this person pay for the property when they bought it? And when did they buy it? And do they have any debt on the property? Because if they don't, that could give them some flexibility in accepting a lower price. So that kind of data can definitely be helpful to have when you're combing through this information and trying to make an important investment decision on a particular property. Another fairly useful thing you'll have with a pro account is the rent analysis tool. In addition to showing you what the rent average is in your area and how your property compares to others in the market. It'll also give you a lot more specifics about the comparable properties that it's using to compare your property to. And that information includes the distance of that property from your property, the rent that that property is supposedly getting, the size of the property, the price per square foot, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, the building type, and also it gives you these clickable buttons where if you want to generate a property report for any one of those comps, all you gotta do is click that property report button and it will give you all that information on that property. So you can dig into a lot more details and see information about the comparables that are being stacked up next to your property. There's also this thing called the batch analysis tool, which basically allows you to copy and paste a bunch of different properties and plug them all in there at once. And it'll show you a bunch of averages for each of those properties in a bunch of different scenarios with one bedroom, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, Five. It's the same thing you can do if you were to plug in all those properties one by one by one into Rentometer, but it allows you to just do a bunch of them with one click. And then you can download a CSV file and analyze that all further if you want to. So that's how the batch analysis tool works. You can also generate these neighborhood and zip code reports, which are essentially very similar to the rent analysis reports. It's just that it's not focusing on a specific address. It's looking at that zip code or that neighborhood and showing you what the average is in those areas. So at the end of the day, is Rentometer still a useful tool? I think it probably is. Just because you can't bet your life on it doesn't mean it can't still serve a purpose. I think it's still something that's probably worth bookmarking and just checking out if and when you need a really quick assessment on a particular property or a particular market. However, I would not stop with this. I would definitely make sure you get inside a property, understand the condition of it, the size, the parking of it, 
available, all the different factors that can affect a reasonable rent price. And understand that stuff before you really zero in on the analysis of your property. Because if you just take whatever this site throws at you, I mean, it may be spot on, but it might not be because it doesn't have all the information that you need to really make that assessment. And I'll be honest with you, you know, I think this issue is actually kind of a tough nut to crack. It's one of those things that I think everybody would love to have just be simple and easy where you literally could just plug in a few pieces of information and know the answer, but it just doesn't work that way. And in terms of like how you fill in that gap and really figure out what the number is and be confident in it, what I do is I'll either invite my potential property manager into the property to see it with their own eyes or just get some really good pictures and send it over to them and ask them, okay, if you were managing this property for me, knowing what you know from this information, how much do you think you could get per month for rent from this one? And keep in mind, this property manager probably has several other properties in the same neighborhood. So like if anybody would be able to get an accurate read on the situation, it's them. So that's why I think a property manager and a good property manager at that is probably the best qualified person to answer that question. Or if you're managing your own property, then obviously you probably have a fairly decent idea of what that property would generate too. And if you don't, you can always check out websites like Craigslist or Hotpads or even Zillow. By the way, Zillow actually has their own version of Rentometer where you can do a lot of the same stuff and check out a lot of the same information. So there's a lot of places you can go to get an accurate read on what rent rates are in your area. You don't have to use this website only. However, as a starting point, it's not a bad place just to get a really quick assessment of what's going on in that market. If you're looking for some alternatives to Rentometer, I'm gonna list them out in the blog post associated with this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, just check out the link in the description and you can go there and see a lot more details with screenshots of what the service looks like if you're using a pro account and a lot of other details I just didn't have time to mention here in this video. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this and I'll talk to you next time. See ya.